Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel where you get daily and consistent hot topics in music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As you come into the chat, drop your crowns and your elephants and let me know where you're watching from. We have an update in regards to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane, the money issues, legal issues, and Tom Girardi's bankruptcy case. So as you know, we just recapped the part three of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, and we had a caller call in, Kristen, that mentioned that there was this major settlement. And I was like, oh, I hadn't seen that. And I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this because to me, it's major news. But of course, friend of the of our platform, Emily D. Bur Ugh, I can't even speak this point. Emily D. Baker reported on this just a couple of days ago, watched that video, then, of course, our friends over at the Bravo docket broke down the bankruptcy case and where they are currently. And the biggest question I have is, does this ha does this give Erica or does this? I can't even speak. Let me take a sip. I woke up this morning with a sore throat. It's not COVID. I've been tested. <sighs> does this put Erica in a better position of getting off the hook in regards to the money that is owed to the victims. As you know, Girardi Keys, their debt is over $101 million, okay? Over $101 million. So there's a lot of money that was owed. And when we first reported on the story, we weren't sure, we weren't sure if the victims would see a dime. We thought that Tom Girardi took all this money, spent all this money, and we weren't going to see any of the money for the victims. Well, we should keep in mind, regardless if the victims do get money right now, that money isn't the money that they were originally owed. This is money from a recent settlement. So just keep that in mind. Tom Girardi's still trash. Just saying. <laughs> Look, he's still trash. But the biggest question, as I said to you before, for me is, is this does this put Eric in a better position to be off the hook. However, look, we'll examine that in just a second. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Thank you so much, Ali. I look, I, I hate being sick because I can be such a big baby about it. But I'm all right. I'm all right. It's just a sore throat right now. I've taken my vitamins. I've done what I need to do. I'm drinking some tea. I didn't get a chance to put any honey in it, unfortunately, but I'll do that later. What's going on, everyone? I see you all in the chat. London's in the house. Um, Boxer Girl with real victims, not um, as Erica says, alleged. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. We, we already covered that, and I'm not even an attorney, but even the attorneys are, 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 are saying to, to Erica, they're not alleged victims. They've won in court. They are actual victims. Actual victims. Um, thank you. Yes, I need to get some. I do have lemon, and I have honey. I just didn't have enough time to um, <laughs> to do everything that I wanted to do. Sometimes I start and I'm like, I have, I, have, I have 15 minutes before I need to start. And then before I know it, oh my God, you're late. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's all right. Cause it's a situation to go get my honey. Um, my honey's on a, it's, it's a situation. I'll get it after the live. I have some tea. That's the most important. So let's go, let's get into this. So I watch Emily D. Bakers, and as always, we cite our sources here on the channel. Emily's full video is cited in the description of this video. So be sure to check that out and support her. Um, she talked about this. She was one of the first uh, talking about this recent settlement. And I had to listen to it a couple of times. Emily breaks things down, but even this portion, you have to kind of listen a few times. So as you know, Tom Girardi's law firm, Girardi Keys, is in bankruptcy court. You know, we've covered Ronald Richards' coverage of this as well because he's involved. Uh, he has a lawsuit against Erica for money that she reportedly was given through the law firm. And now they're sort of on the same side in regards to their claim. Uh, and Jay Edelson, another law firm that's suing Erica uh, for for her involvement in money and things of that nature. So right now, the bankruptcy court and Erica are sort of on the same side. That hasn't been resolved. So that's why I say Erica isn't really off the hook. She's not off the hook when it comes to money that's owed. That's not clear. And it's still not very clear how much money will 
will go to the actual victims and not just the creditors. One of the things that stood out to me in this whole situation, and you know, we've talked about Erica's involvement and her responsibility and morality and all of that, but we we don't talk enough about Tom Girardi's responsibility. We don't talk about the other partners in the law firm. We don't talk about the people that like the California bar. We don't talk about the creditors that still lent money to Tom Girardi and the law firm, even though they had access to their books and even though they knew, allegedly, I'll just say allegedly, what he was doing with the money. And I'm not saying what he's doing, like stealing, but they knew that he wasn't the best. Look, if you got a bad credit score, these creditors are not going to give you money, but they were still giving Tom Girardi money, even though he owed them millions of dollars. We don't talk enough about those people. And I understand why, because those people don't necessarily have a face or a name. They're not, they're not on TV. They're not famous. But Erica Jane is not the only one that holds a little bit of responsibility here. If anything, they hold probably more responsibility. Because why would you continue to lend this law firm, Tom Girardi, millions of dollars, sue him, in the middle of suing him, you're still lending him money. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. But look... There's a lot of things that don't make sense to me. <clears throat> Let me open what I want to open here before we get into that. Hold on, yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that we covered um, in regards to Erica Jane calling the victims alleged victims, saying that there's still a lot that's that hasn't been uncovered. Although Joey Rui Gomez won a lawsuit against your husband for stealing his money. So he's not an alleged victim. He's an actual victim. All right. <clears throat> Let me just share my screen because I want to, if you guys are just joining us, of course, I'm your boy, The Kempire. Here you're getting daily and consistent content. As you know, we've been following the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and all of the litigation that's going on when in, involving Erica. One of the biggest questions that I had when we first heard about this, shout out to Kristen that brought this to our attention. And we first heard about this, that this recent settlement and that Girardi Keys was entitled to their lawyer's fees and a portion of this recent settlement, which was $1.8 billion, okay? And we'll get into that in just a second. So the portion that they would re receive really would cover all of their debt. So one of the biggest questions that I posed at the time when I heard this was, well, does that leave the door open for Erica to not have to worry about any of this stuff anymore? Possibly, but that has not been confirmed because of course it's a legal situation. You have to go through all the channels and conversations and judgments and, th and things like that before we will get to that space, okay? And then Erica will be without a job and no one will care about what Erica is doing. Let's be real. Erica has probably one more good season on the show because of these legal matters that that's the only reason why people are interested in Erica. Erica has been boring on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after se after her first season. Let's be real. Some of you love her because she has the glam and the makeup. She has no personality. Let's be real. And I've been saying that even before what we knew about her lifestyle and the alleged, you know, um, stealing. And well, it's not a well, look. <sighs> All right, let me share my screen. Let's get into, shout out to our friends over at the Bravo. Hold on, let me take this off. That's not what I wanted. Shout out to our friends over at the Bravo docket. If you're not following them, it's another really great, you know, two attorneys that cover Bravo legal messes because that seems to be... <laughs> The big thing going on right now. So shout out to them if you're not following them. I've linked their Instagram in the description of this video. If you just join us, we're talking about an update in regards to what's going on in this Girardi Keys bankruptcy. But I wanted to cover 
some of the things that we covered originally in regards to Erica's statements on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, part three. So I love what they did here and I had to bring it to you guys. So they say here, we want to clear up a few things following part three of the reunion. First, it has been legally determined that Girardi did not pay Rui Gomez. You know, we, we met the Rui Gomez family in the Housewife and Hustler documentary that Andy Cohen didn't want to watch. Anyways. First, it has been legally determined that Girardi did not pay Rui Gomez his settlement money, which totaled over $11 million. As a reminder, Rui Gomez was Tom's former client who was the victim of a San Bruno blast. Tom was victorious in representing him against PG&E. Rui Gomez sued Tom in 2019 and was successful in receiving a judgment against him for owed settlement money. So he's not an alleged victim. He's an actual victim. Okay. Next, the word allegedly or alleged is used when something is illegal or wrong is said to have been done, but has not been proved. Okay. A legally enforceable judgment is a fact. The word alleged does not apply. So, you know, I said this the other day. But I said, you know what? Look, I'm not an attorney, but attorneys are saying it. And I love the way that the Bravo docket breaks it down. It's in layman's terms. It's easy for all of us that are not attorneys, even though I've worked with quite a few. They break it down in such a very easy way for everyone to understand. OK. Um. Third point, before Erica filed for divorce, Erica was personally served with two subpoenas in the Rui Gomez case after Rui Gomez obtained the legally enforceable judgment. The subpoenas specifically ordered Erica to appear before the court to, quote, furnish information to aid enforcement of a money judgment against you. Again, this happened before Erica filed for divorce. We all knew this. You know, this some of the, some of this is a reminder for some of us that have been following this. But if you haven't been following this, this is an update. Okay. Moreover, in the Lion Air case, it was determined that Tom Girardi had not paid his clients two million dollars. When asked by the judge to explain what happened to the money, his attorney could not offer an explanation, but that that he was unable to pay the money owed. As a reminder, the Lion Air case is the case in the Northern District of Illinois involving pl plane crash victims. Okay, this means it is a fact that Tom did not pay his clients in the Lion Air case $2 million of their settlement money. Again, this is Erica saying in the reunion, alleged victims. No, these cases have gone through actual courtrooms with determinations of guilt and responsibility. So this is another case. So it's not just the Rui Gomez case. There is the Lion Air case. Put simply, Rui Gomez was victimized by Girardi. Tom kept Rui Gomez settlement money and the L.A. Superior Court entered a legally enforceable judgment against Tom on behalf of, of Rui Gomez. And Erica was notified twice in writing of the enforceable judgment in the Rui Gomez case before she filed for divorce. Judicially proven facts and admissions on the record are not alleged. I think we all learned something today. <laughs> I think we all learned something today. Even though I think a lot of us are far smarter than we give ourselves credit in, in, in regards to this, that is just a quick update in regards to um, what Erica said. And I thought that was so important. And I wanted to talk about that the other day. But in regards to this recent settlement, um, they are also giving us an update on the status of the Girardi Keys bankruptcy. So, you know, we've been talking about that. I know that's very complicated. There's a lot of information going around. There are a lot of people talking about it. I know a lot of you are confused. But let's get an update again from our friends over at the Bravo Docket. If you're not following them, be sure to follow them. I've also posted a link to Emily D. Baker's video where she talks about this as well at the 10 minute mark. So be sure to check that out and support her. Okay. All right. 
Now let me share my screen again. So they have, and as I said, I love the way that they break these things down. I'm curious about the status of the Girardi bankruptcies, okay? Let's go through it. Bankruptcy cases. Bankruptcy trustees have been searching for money to pay more than $100 million in Tom's personal and law firm debt. This includes investigating whether Erica has any assets that belong to either Tom or the firm. Fortunately, Girardi Keith Tom's law firm still had valuable cases when it was forced into bankruptcy. So this is, goes back to when Kristen called in and brought up this recent uh, case. OK, most notably, the firm had thousands of clients with shares of a recent one point eight billion dollar billion dollar settlement stemming from a massive natural gas leak in California. The firm's estate will get 45 percent of the attorney's fees from those cases. This could result in tens of millions of dollars for those seeking payment from the firm, including victims who didn't receive settlement payments, okay? Erica has twice asked the bankruptcy judge to remove Ronald Richards, as you know, from the case based on his tweets and interviews on YouTube. Shout out to a Up and Adam. The bankruptcy judge found Erica's motion to remove Ronald Richards from the case, quote, totally without merit, but Erica has appealed the, the decision there has not yet been a decision on the appeal. More than likely, that will be, again, strike down. Okay. In the personal bankruptcy case, the trustee said Erica could be a co-debtor for millions of dollars of claims against the estate. The largest sum owed to a single victim is burn victim Joseph Rui Gomez, who obtained an $11 million judgment against Girardi and his firm last year. The judgment gives the Rui Gomez family priority over other ex-clients and creditors. In the personal bankruptcy, Rui Gomez gets 80% of the money recovered until the debt is satisfied, with the remaining 20% to be distributed among other creditors, including other alleged victims, lenders, and vendors. Okay. So as you know, we you know when we had that really great Sunday afternoon when we went through all of the items in the auction. So the auction's over. This is what they got. So Gerardi Keese's bankruptcy trustee cataloged and auctioned off law firm items, you know, including the lingerie, Erica Jane memorabilia. There was a Cadillac. There were crystals that looked like they needed to be saged up the mother. All kinds of things. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was a lot of fun. Just saying. Ugh, law firms. <laughs> so Gerardi Key's bankruptcy trustee cataloged and auctioned off law firm uh, items, bringing in $267,000 for creditors. Okay. Gerardi's home in La Quinta, California, sold for $1.25 million. $730,000 will go to repay creditors. The Rui Gomez family will receive $584,000. The remaining $146,000 will go to unsecured claimants, a group that includes numerous other ex-clients. Okay? Girardi's personal bankruptcy trustee listed his Pasadena home for $13 million. But as you know, nobody wants the home. The price has been slashed. It is now listed for $8.9 million. Another place that needs to be staged up the mother father. Just saying. <sighs> okay. Again, guys, if you just joined us, we're talking about an update in regards to this Girardi Keese bankruptcy situation. The $1.8 billion settlement seems as if it seems that we might finally get some justice in Tom Girardi's crimes. Does this completely free Erica from any liability? Not necessarily. That is yet to be determined. That is yet to be determined. She still has other lawsuits that she's dealing with in, in this regard. So attorney fees. The trustee in Tom's law firm bankruptcy recently hired another law firm to investigate the lending companies he used. Creditors are concerned, however, that the fees of up to $975 per hour that the firm is charging could exhaust the estate's funds and thereby the money they are owed. 
Speaking to Law 360, creditor Kathy Rui Gomez, Joseph Rui Gomez's mother, stated that she was concerned that the case appeared to be generating more drama and attorney fees than money for Girardi's victims. Okay, so look, as I said to you before, I've worked for a law firm, attorney fees, very familiar with. So that is the other concern. Yes, th there are, there is money coming in from this settlement, but what will actually get to the victims? That is a major concern. That is a major concern. But as I said to you before, part of the reason why I wanted to do this video is because so many times we talk about this situation and we say, yes, the victims, let's talk about the victims, let's bring up the victims. We even seen recently um, Andy Cohen, you know, you know, do that on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion. And a lot of times I just feel people are saying it to say it as opposed to really mean it and follow up on it and advocate for the victims and talk about will they actually get money? And I haven't seen enough people talk about this recent update. And shout out again to Kristen for bringing this to our attention because I, it didn't come across my desk. And then I saw our friends over at the Bravo docket break it down and talk about it. So you said, you know what? I need to talk about this. I need to give an update because so often, as I said to you before, we have talked about this case and we keep saying, will the victims get anything? And no one has really provided any clear answers. Right now, this seems to be a good sign, fingers are crossed, that the victims will see something. And it's not because of Tom Girardi or the, the law firm. It's because there was more money that was owed that could pay off their debt. So let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. If you're just joining us, hey, guys, we are live on multiple platforms, including my TikTok. We're live on, of course, in the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. We are also live on the Kempire and Kempire Daily on Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter at the Kempire. All right. <clears throat> let me see what you guys are saying in here. Do, 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 do. And thank you, Jen. As, as a reminder, guys, be sure to like the video. We have almost 500 people watching. Number eight, Tom was right. Tom had a lot of influence. And apparently that influence beyond just political or judicial, it was in, look, people lending him money, even though he owed millions and they were suing him for millions. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, good afternoon here in New York. I'm going to drop the call in link because I do want to hear what you guys have to say in regards to this. As always, let me just drop this. <clears throat> I also want to save my voice. I do want to go live later to talk about Queens and uh, Insecure because we haven't had a chance to do that because there's just been so much news. I also got an update in regards to Andy Cohen. He's going to be on the Today Show to announce a new Real Housewives city. A lot of people are speculating that this new Royal Housewives city is going to be the Royal Housewives of Dubai and that um, – I forgot her name. You guys will remind me in the chat. I don't know why I forgot her name because she is a fellow tourist like myself. I can't think of her name. I know it, stands, it ends with Lansbury, right? She was on Ladies of London. I can't remember. Anyways. <laughs> so they're saying that she, she will probably be one of the stars on the Royal Housewives of Dubai. And that is the new city that Andy more than likely will. Un yes, Caroline Stansbury. Thank you. Thank you. I can't think this morning. Um, <clears throat> so they're saying that more than likely. Um, she was good. She was good TV on Ladies of London. I watched that during the pandemic as well. She was really, really good. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. And Dubai, the fabulous lifestyle of Dubai. But she's not originally from Dubai. So... I'm okay with her being on it, but I want some real ladies that are from Dubai on it. I want some real ladies from Dubai on it. So we shall see. Jesus says, I didn't like her. How dare you, Jesus? <laughs> Look, everyone has a right to their opinion. And I get why you didn't like her. She was a interesting character on Ladies of London, but she's great TV. She's great TV. Guys, if you're just joining us, of course, be sure to like the video if you haven't liked it already. We're going to take a couple of callers. Um, let me just put this up. Don't forget to join our Texan community. That way you don't miss out on any of the updates in regards to this. We are talking about the most recent update in regards to this 
settlement that Girardi Keys had, uh, they still had profitable clients that were still in the middle of settlement agreements and whatnot. So there was a recent settlement of $1.8 billion uh, that could cover their debt, that could cover their debt because they are still owed 45% of their attorney's fees. Okay, 45%. Lord. All right. I also saw someone speculate that there, um, a Real Housewives of Nashville. Nashville would be great. Nashville would be a great city to do. I mean, it's just a great city in general. Um, we shall see. Uh, this announcement is supposed to be coming on Monday, and Andy will be dropping by the Today Show to make the announcement. Ah, oh, Lord. <laughs> Can we just bring back the Real Housewives of D.C.? That's not going to happen, especially now because they have Potomac. They're not going to do it. I would like Chicago, too. I would like Chicago, too. Guys, if you're watching the replay of this, I want to know your thoughts on this recent settlement, what the future could be for the victims of Tom Girardi, and also what city you want to see in the Real Housewives franchise come to fruition. All right, let me take a couple of callers. Matter of fact, let me just pull because I did not pin this. All right. All right, Allie, I'm going to bring you up. Hold on one second. What's going on, Allie? Hi. Um, excuse my voice. I finally got it back. Oh, um, trust me, I understand. <laughs> and I'm laughing at my husband because he was answering a question that you asked, and I was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the answer? <laughs> <laughs> what was the um, question? But, I don't <laughs> what? What was the question that, that I asked, and what was his answer? Oh, you were asking about what new shows to bring up and he's like not chicago <laughs> but he's we're in wisconsin so he's biased oh not <laughs> chicago i like chicago not so well he's biased you know that's how it is here <laughs> <laughs> what are your but, thoughts on um, the information you know, that we received what i was what i was thinking of when you were going through all of this is when i went through my divorce um, you know, and, and every lawsuit is different per the state they're in, unless obviously, unless it's a federal case. But when I went through my divorce here in Wisconsin, um, we were told because of the fraud that had gone on with my ex mm -hmm. and then just some other, um, debt that had occurred that I was not aware of, um, the judge ruled in my favor, but I was informed, um, that there was a, there, there was a law in Wisconsin that I could still be sued as the significant other, um, after, even after the judge declared that I was not responsible for the debt in the original mm -hmm. divorce. Mm -hmm. So once the original divorce was fine, all of these creditors could come after me and I would have to get a second judgment mm. to get myself dismissed from each case. And it was like each case. So oh. I ended up, my, my lawyer at the time did a bunch of work to get the majority of the debtors, especially the fraud debt, they signed off that they would not come after me, but I did get, I did get sued a couple of times and granted it was very easy, um, especially with the lawyer I had, um, to get out of it, mm. but, and have them dismiss me from each case. But wow. the fact it was just, it was a pain in you know, the I'm butt not. because, you know, this was three, four years after a divorce where I had a judge say it wasn't my, you know, my debt. I took on this amount of debt. I paid it off, but they're coming after me again. So I just wanted to point that out yeah. because I don't know what California laws are. I don't know what any of the other laws are around where each and also, we have to keep in mind too, every, every, like you said, every state is very different, but also this, this case is a little bit more different because we have money that went to EJ Global. And exactly. That, she signed off on those tax returns. So that's where it makes it very different for Erica. But I think what you're bringing up is very important as well, because yeah. 
even if she's cleared in this particular case, does it mean that she's cleared in every other legal matter that's attached with their 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 crimes? And there's a possibility that they can she can still be sued again. Yeah. And that's what I had I I called be and to mention that because I saw a lot of comments um where people were asking, well, why is she being held responsible for this? Why is she, you know, if they've already sued and they already have um, a declaration, why is she being brought up in it? They're not divorced yet. So technically until it gets, and even if California has a law like Wisconsin, even after the divorce is finalized, there's a possibility that she can be sued. Mm. and multiple times and you know and she is currently I mean, it's, it's not just, fun yeah and it's just it's not just this particular case she is being sued by multiple in multiple places right yeah now. yeah so i just wanted to bring up that real quick because that was it just sparked when i was listening to it and i thought well I and for those that don't, have don't know your like story it. and they're new to the channel, um, Ali has called in before to share that. Can you just quickly let people know the situation that you were in and why um, why you were in this position? Yeah, um, just briefly um, and without details because I don't want to ever get sued. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, my ex had um, the last... Well, I don't know how long it, I honestly don't know how long it went on, but he had committed fraud on multiple levels, on state level, private level, and in my opinion, um, a federal level, but that was just, that was tossed out. They didn't even want to pursue it. But, and I, we were having trouble at the time and discussing divorce, and I through nine months, the last nine months of our marriage, I started finding um, like receipts and things. Um, I started finding proof that it was actually happening. And I'm smart enough <laughs> to know mm -hmm. to keep all of that. And I kept all of it. I gave it to my lawyer. Um, and then the real big thing that got him and got him, got him. And when I say I turned him in and, you know, people can judge me on whether or not that was the right thing to do. But I found a burner cell phone in the house after he abandoned our house. And it had a lot of damaging evidence on it. And I called the sheriff. They put it in an evidence bag. They drove it to the courthouse where my lawyer met them and they entered it into evidence. And then we got to use it in the divorce hearing as well. Wow. But, you know, it's one of those things that that's why when I say Erica knew Erica had to have known, you know, there are red flags that you see. And if you ignore those red flags, then that's, that's on you. But, I didn't ignore the red flags and I'm happy I didn't because some of the things that he did, in my opinion, were just, it's, I mean, obviously nowhere near what Tom has done, but it's still just gross. You know, it's still just, it's still theft. It's, yeah. and you know, I didn't want to be married to that. And, and that now you're moving on and you're coffin. married to someone else that doesn't like Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Allie, first of all thank you for sharing your story and adding a little bit more to this conversation yeah no problem have a good and day i will talk to you later bye. bye feel better okay all right um i'm gonna take rusty i'm gonna bring you up what's going on rusty rusty i can't hear you hi oh. campire you look great for someone go. who's not feeling well Oh, <laughs> what's going on? Um, I have uh, just a couple of, I have just a couple of things. Number one, what is going on with the other law partners in the firm? I mean, they're all going to have to be held responsible to a certain degree, I would expect. 
Yeah. And number two, and I don't know where I heard this, so this could be absolutely nothing, but that his first wife, who he had children with, mm. waived child support in lieu of the children inheriting his estate. And I don't know mm. if anybody in chat has heard that also. Either that or I dreamt it. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty, are you there? Did we lose? I'm here. So I just don't know, uh, you know, how these other lawyers are avoiding all of this at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'm they, wondering just, too. they took off in droves. It was like lemmings. Yeah. I, Rusty, I think there is Meanwhile, a delay. I also agree that Erica knew. She was already in a deposition for fraud. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I, I think there's a delay and it's causing us to not have a good conversation. So, Rusty, do me a favor. Try and call back in so we can have a, a better uh, oh. back and forth. Okay. All right. Uh, Anthony, I'm going to bring you up for a quick comment. What's going on, Anthony? Hi, Campire. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, for all of this, Erica, Jane, in terms of her side of this whole Girardi case, I feel like the whole question of does she knew, did she knew, past tense, is kind of irrelevant because now we all know exactly what's going on, what's happening day by day. There's news coming out of this. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's more of the question of why aren't you doing anything about it? And as well, we know that Tom was giving her gifts in terms of jewelry, and those gifts came from victims. No. Yeah. Like, how else was he able to purchase any of this? Was it work money or was it victim's money? Mm. Like, I'm sure there wasn't really, in terms of separate separating money, it was just all together. Now we don't know if it was work money or victim's money. And yeah. for Erica to keep any piece that Tom has gave her and not give it or, like, still keep it, like, uh, uh. sorry. No, I understand. <laughs> it's just... And that part for me, it's like, really, Erica, like now you do know and you know this is, it came from victims' bags, from victims' cases. They need that money. Like there's no way around it. Like they have to have it in order to still live. And yet for you, you're still employed. Still living and, very well. Right? It's just for me, that whole question of does she know, she knows now. Yeah, I'm sure she knew somewhat, but now that whole question is not even a thing anymore for us. It's like, why aren't you doing for the victims and why are you keeping all of this if it came from victims? Yeah, that's a big question. Maybe in part four, we'll get an answer. But I mean, she hasn't given us an answer all season and in, in, in the first three parts. So, Anthony, anything else before I let you go? Um, thank you so much, Campfire. Um, love your channel. Hope you have a good one. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Kristen's backstage. Kristen, you know, I mentioned you a couple of times at the top of this. Uh, you you were the first to bring this information to us. And as I have said before, I feel like a lot of people have not been reporting on this. And I know it's not a done deal that the victims are going to get money, but this is a, a better sign that possibly they, they are going to get money. Kristen, what are your thoughts on some of this? So I kind of want to expand on what Anthony had said. That was kind of my comment. And I did hear you uh, mention me. I got a text from Jordan telling me, Campire mentioned you. And I was like, oh, oh, my day to sleep in. Okay, all right. <laughs> but um, so one of the things that Anthony said is, you know, really, really accurate for me. And that's that it doesn't matter to any of us if she knew beforehand, because it's already been a year yeah. since she filed. Yeah. So when I think about it, I'm just like, okay, well, maybe she knew, maybe she didn't, maybe she had an inkling, but stuck her head in the sand. And it, I mean, that first time I called into your show and I was like, but what does she know now? She knows now, what about now? Yeah. And I think that it's really important that we, you know, pay attention to how she's behaving now because of the fact that, so 
in two th- let's just I- imagine that she only found out at the end of of her marriage then in 2019 when Ru- the Rui Gomez family sued and then she was subpoenaed and was supposed to be deposed in May and September of 2020 in order to um, testify about Tom's assets. Mm -hmm. She dodged those subpoenas saying she couldn't be deposed because she was filming. Yeah. But remember last year during COVID when they were doing all of the filming stuff and doing everything, it's like, okay, but they weren't actually filming. Yeah. Not at both of those times, which means one of those times she lied. Are we surprised? No. And <laughs> and I think and I think like people who are saying, well, you know, she didn't know anything. It's not her responsibility. She didn't you know, it, she's not the one who stole the money. OK, let's go down there then. But Joseph Rui Gomez, when he was burned and, it, you know, he exploded, he had he had impact trauma from the explosion. Mm-hmm. He had burns so bad that he had skin grafts, but he also had internal damage. When you're burned, the nerve endings actually melt, and that's what causes the constant pain. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it is one of the worst things that can happen to you. You know, when we see like the 9-11 victims, for example, those with the worst injuries were the burn victims, not the ones who got hit by falling glass or, or, you know, had like the vehicle around them, you know, shift on top of them from the wind as the, you know, like all of those things. What, what were the worst injuries, the burn victims? So, you know, we see in that we're seeing the, you know, that there are cancer patients that, These are people that their own bodies are expanding cancerous cells inside them and they're having to do chemotherapy, which makes it hard to eat. It makes it hard to keep food down. It makes it hard to use the bathroom. It makes your hair fall out, makes your skin become scaly and itchy. You break out in hives. It's not pleasant. You're talking about the Lion Air crash victims. That plane crashed into the water. It impacted the water at 500 miles an hour some Mm. of the there some of the of the victims were still in their seats and they were found but none of the bodies were intact even those that were found had extreme damage and i'm married to an aviator so when i tell you that i'm looking at my husband's boots right now i'm sitting in the man cave i'm looking at my husband's boots and in his boot is a dog tag because And I and I even asked him this three days ago. I said, hey, you know, why do you have this in your boot? And he was like, oh, well, it's so if the plane goes down, there's something to identify. And it's like, so that's what I'm talking about. You know, that that these people, this they were going on work trips, going on vacation, moving across the world. There were children that were on that plane. There were grandmothers and, you know, there were aunts and cousins and all on that plane and that plane impacted the ocean and the families only got back parts of their loved ones to bury. It was a a horrible, horrible tragedy. And, you know, then we have these, the athletes, the, the NFL players that had to sue because they have, they have traumatic brain injuries from their careers. And yet, you know, they, though they were abandoned as soon as they couldn't play anymore and they had to sue. So these are the victims. Their, their injuries, what has happened to them is not alleged. They are actual victims of what happened to them. She might say they're alleged victims of Tom, but even that is not, it it is. She can't. Yeah, exactly. So maybe she didn't know before 2019, maybe it did take a year to, you know, get her ducks in a row to actually walk away from Tom. But since then, she's defended Tom. Yeah. Since then, she has said that Tom has done so many good things. She has taunted or taunted the victims with his career and touted his career to all of us. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, she had gifts from Tom and she's not so she's not sure 
where those gifts were purchased. I understand not selling everything because she's afraid she won't have anything left if she does. I understand not wanting to give over every dime because if when all is said and done, how I mean, she still has to be able to you know, pay the bills and buy groceries. But we don't see her stepping back from that life of luxury as a woman desperate to have something when this finishes. We don't see that because we still see her, you know, out there in a $10,000 a month house. We still see her driving a brand new Range Rover. We still see her doing the crazy traveling And we still see her wearing the gifts that Tom gave her, not the things that she's holding on to so that she'll have something to sell to help when the things get bad, because they're going to get bad. But we see her holding on to gifts given to her by the man who did this to the victims I just described. Yeah. We, We don't see her showing them compassion. We see her showing them derision. We see her mocking them with you know, uh, sitting on a burning crucifix as she's got, you know, orphans and widows hanging from her ears and she's wearing lingerie. Like, that. Like that's what we see her. That's what she's sharing on social media. We see the bankruptcy court for Girardi Keys, the own investigator being mocked as Pharisees and herself compared to Christ. And then her say, no, no, I wasn't actually making that comparison. I mean, we don't see any empathy for anyone. We don't see regret or remorse. What we see is anger at anyone who dares, dares even ask the most basic of questions. And that right there is, is a tell, you know, I said it the last time I called into your show, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. She is showing us over and over and over again. She gave a TED talk in 2018. And what did we all see? Manipulation. 18 months ago, she went on Watch What Happens Live. And what did we see? Her saying she pays her own bills. Her saying that she knows about money and not to question her. That's what we see. So we, we see her book. We see what she wrote in her book. And what did she say in the book? She's a smart businesswoman. And that's the thing, I, you know, there's one thing to, to, to look at everything that we've seen on the show, but to be in a relationship with a man that has been accused of the crimes that, she, that he's been accused of and proven in court of, it says a lot about you as well. I, I don't think people just are, you, you magically attract um, evil. I think there's a level, and we've seen that side of her, especially in her interactions with the other housewives. Erica's not so, you know innocent no she's she's not and and i think that the biggest takeaway for the viewers from all of this is that she isn't good she's not a good person she doesn't have ethics or morals that all of us identify with because kempire if it were you if it were me you know what i i've been married to my husband for seven years okay i've been i have been a military wife to two different men, but for over 20 years. Mm. And I know that when my mar- when I'm in my marriage, I may not know every detail. My first husband was not forthcoming with me about things, but I knew something was off. I knew something was wrong. And I knew that he wasn't telling me the truth. He wasn't being clear with me. I knew something was wrong and it took a while to get away. It's not like I just went, Oh, I'm done. And then I walked away. You know, that's not how it works when a marriage is ending, you know? And I think that, you know, she's sitting here saying, I had no idea. I had no idea. Neither of my marriages have been as, has been as long as hers, you know? And yet, I know that there were signs in my marriages when things, when things were wrong. The difference is the difference for Erica is, you know, I don't defend the man who hurt me, who scared me, who, you know, I don't defend it on me. Yeah, exactly. I don't defend any of that stuff because what he did to me was bad. What he did to other people was bad. And I'm not going to defend that, to defend him. So when I see Erica still defending Tom, that for me is like, 
it's almost like she can't help herself from trying to keep some sort of glamour intact of her life. And Tom is attached to that. Mm. Now, you know that I think that Tom was the criminal, but Erica was the abuser in that relationship. I've been very open about that. Mm. And the, everything that we continue to see, especially now that we've seen the clips from part four, have, has anyone seen her do or say anything that disproves my belief? Because I've yet to see someone say, no, actually, she did X, Y, and Z, and you can watch it in this video. Here's the clip, and it'll show you. Yeah. You know, I don't see any of that. No one, and I mean no one, has said, uh, well, if you watch this or if you look at this, you can see that Erica wasn't like that. In reality, all I get are more clips and more proof, or, or not necessarily proof, but more things that back up my suspicions. Yeah. And I think that's what the viewers are getting. That's what your subscribers are getting. Every time we see more footage, it makes things worse for her, not better. We're not seeing her get better. We're not seeing her image improve. We're seeing more and more of who she really is, and it is ugly. Mm. Kristen, as always, I love it when you call in. Thank you so much. And thank you again for uh, pointing this this particular recent story out to us. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. I got some of the details wrong when I initially, you know, said it on the show. Like I thought it was one point three billion. It's actually one point eight. Yeah. And I wasn't aware and I missed that portion of the video in, in Emily D Baker's. I don't know how I missed it. Cause I watched it multiple times, but where she talked about the co-counsel is entitled to 75%. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so then I'm doing the math and I'm like, no, that's still hundreds of millions of dollars. It's oh, still the 25% that Girardi keys is entitled to from that settlement is still over $200 million. And it's still enough to make things right for not just the victims, but the creditors. Yeah. Hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. But I mean, I, I at this point would rather the victims get part of something than all of nothing. Yeah. And and look, I, I understand the creditors are entitled legally to this money. But as I was saying earlier in this video, they were still lending this man money despite suing him. For money oh, yeah. So part of me is like, y'all shouldn't even get get money because you know yeah. what you're lending to. What yeah, happened? absolutely. Yeah. I complete. I completely agree. I completely agree with you. I think that Tom was trading on his connections and his network yeah. of buddies, and that's how he can. That's how he was able to do this for so long. He was part of the good old boy system. Mm. Kristen, thank you so much for calling in. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Mama Ali, for the super chat. It's a court's job to make you whole, not keep up an insane lifestyle. That's important for Erica's case. Erica is overflowing when uh, Vix has zero, uh, have zero. Oh, my Lord. Let me see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, the creditors are complicit. However, our legal system doesn't <laughs> cover that that area of things. But it is what it is. Guys, we're going to continue to follow the story. I just want to bring Rusty back up. Rusty, what's going on? Can we back and forth? Rusty? Hi, uh -oh. I, I think I'm having trouble. Can you it's hear okay. me? Yeah. Rusty, did you have anything else that you wanted to say about this? Yeah, just that I don't think Erica is ever going to be held accountable for what Girardi Keys did. But uh, the IRS will come for her, as someone in the chat said earlier. From what I remember, and maybe laws have changed now, but after three years, if you own a business, even a sole proprietorship, if you've lost money consistently in three or maybe five years, the IRS no longer considers it a business. It's a hobby. Oh. <laughs> So she's going to have problems. Oh, that part. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty, thank you so much for calling in. Anything else before I let you go? Uh, I'm sorry? Anything else before I let you go? No, that's about it. This is such an interesting subject. It is. It is. And we're going to continue to follow it. Rusty, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Bye. Guys, 
For the replay crew, I want to know your thoughts on these new developments in regards to the Jordy Keys bankruptcy. Again, shout out to our friends over at Emily D. Baker and our friends over at the Bravo Doc. Be sure to follow them and support them and let them know where you where, where you found them. Um, shout out to our Team Campfire and Royal Court members. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, head on over to teamkempire.com. Shout out to our subscribers. And of course, shout out to our moderators for making this conversation a open, fun interesting calm conversation uh we will be back later to talk about queens uh, that's on currently on abc and of course insecure if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload don't forget to like the video as well it's an easy and free way of supporting the channel and we only have two more days less than two more days to raise twenty five hundred dollars for our breast cancer awareness fundraiser for the charity Black Women's Health Imperative. Donate what you can. Thank you so much to everyone that's already donated and has donated more than once. And shout out to all of the breast cancer survivors and people that have lost their battle. So shout out to the families that are dealing with that loss as well. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will talk to you a little bit later on.